Good morning. It's a joy to be with you on this day when we remember the Ascension and what it means for us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, be with us as we hear or listen to these words, so that they may reflect you into the lives of those who will receive them. Amen. I don't know about you, but I miss going to church. But the staff team are doing such a good job bringing God's word to us via the printed word or by using the internet. Who would have thought that we would have found it so useful in the lockdown to help us to be together with our Lord? My homily today is taken from Luke 24, verse 44 to the end, and Acts 1, verses 1 to 11. There's something about being in company with others, and so it was for the disciples who had met Jesus face to face, who had sat and listened to him teach, had seen him heal the sick, touch lepers, eat with tax collectors, prostitutes, and all kinds of people who were regarded as outcasts. These followers at the beginning of the living church, just as we are the living church today, even separated by the coronavirus. I suspect that like us, they were confused and even afraid. After all, a lot had happened in those three years and they hadn't really understood it all. They believed that Jesus had come to restore Israel, who would be the top nation ruling over everyone else. Well, if they were confused before, I'm sure they really must be now. You can imagine their questions, can't you? What does he mean? We'll receive power when the Holy Spirit comes. We'll be Jesus' witnesses. What kind of power? And what, what kind of witnesses? Jesus had talked to the disciples, telling them that his coming would inaugurate the kingdom of God. When he returned to heaven, God's kingdom would remain in their hearts and be worked out in the lives of all believers through the presence of the Holy Spirit. I guess they were still not prepared for what happened next, an extraordinary and amazing event. They see their friend Jesus taking up into the sky before their very eyes, and then a cloud hides him from their sight. There they are, just standing, staring, looking up at the sky, wondering, what do we do now? To help them, two angels come and tell them something about Jesus returning in the same way he left. And then, nothing. I'm sure they would have remembered Jesus talking about the kingdom of God, but Jesus wasn't going to drive out the Romans or overthrow the rich and the powerful. So what was this power they were going to receive? They must still have felt scared and confused. I wonder what we would have done. What would we do in their place? Would we run away, try to leave this place as fast as our feet could carry us? Not easy in our present situation. Would we push it to the back of our minds and forget it? Would we become depressed and desperate or would we pray together and wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon us at Pentecost and trust Jesus as a man of his word? The disciples already knew what their task was. Jesus had told them that all authority in heaven and on earth had been given to him. And in Matthew, we hear that he told them to go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and teach them to obey everything that Jesus commanded them. His promise was to be with them always, even to the very end of the age. Were these words in their minds as they waited for the gift of the Holy Spirit? Their very lives were going to be transformed and they were going to be given the power to transform the lives of others. Yes, they still had to deal with pain and suffering, but coming was joy and peace, much more than the simple understanding they had before. They would really understand about the kingdom of God in their midst. What are we feeling now? Even in this time of separation, 
change, hardship, and for some sorrow? Are we willing to believe that God has exciting things planned for his church and for every one of our lives, even though we might not quite understand what this will mean for us? Jesus promises the gift of the Holy Spirit to his disciples. If we think back to Luke chapter 4, when Jesus proclaimed, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to, for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour. Jesus is promising that same gift of the Holy Spirit to his disciples, and that includes every one of us, you and me. In the meantime, we can continue to be faithful and loyal, keeping company with our Lord and with one another in any way we can. We can care for our family, friends and neighbours, even at a distance. We can give thanks for the steps that have been taken for our health, safety, safety and well-being. We can continue to pray for those who are ill, facing death in unfamiliar circumstances, the lost and the dying. Continue to pray for those who selflessly care for us in hospital, care homes and in the community, putting their own lives at risk. Let's give thanks for all those who work to keep the food supplies coming to the shops and those that serve us, the doctor's surgeries, the deliverers of our mail, the refuse collectors and so many more. Let's pray that all will encounter the risen Jesus and receive in the hope and love that he offers. We, as Christians, are to proclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. This is what the Ascension tells us. Jesus Christ will return to judge all people and remove all evil from the world. But until that time, we as believers are to work to spread God's kingdom across the world. The book of Acts records how this work began and what the early church did, we must continue. Just like the disciples will wait for the power of the Holy Spirit to come at Pentecost and we'll hear about that soon. In the meantime, Jesus' ascension gives us hope for the future and strength for the present as we choose to be faithful to the way of life that Jesus taught us, even though much of the world around us doesn't perhaps think it's such a good idea. We won't let that deter us, but remain faithful in our seeking the risen Lord in our lives. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are so blessed to have you in our lives. Keep us firm in the faith we have in you as witnesses of the truth. Make us patient and humble as we deal with the present while waiting 